Having said that, uh, Trustee Johnson, why don't you make your motion? Well, look, I appreciate the opportunity to bring it before this board. Uh, as you know, I'd asked to bring it in the September board meeting and uh, tried to bring it up. Um, you suggested in the Finance Committee we didn't get an opportunity with that full agenda to do it there. Um, I do recall walking in during that last budget meeting, walking in during the vote. I didn't get the chance to vote on it, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but it's consistent with this idea that we're um, on track to levy more than we intend to spend. And when we build into our budget uh, the authority to transfer more money into our special reserve fund, that's setting a policy that we, in fact, are, are giving us this, that authority to pile on to our very ample capital reserve fund. So I think it's a policy matter. Um, we ought not do that. We ought to say we have enough money in the capital reserve. Um, if uh, the president's got another procedural way to sort of take that policy, I'd be happy to follow your direction. But I think this board ought to take a policy that we have enough in reserves and that we ought not put any more money into our capital reserves. But I'd be happy to defer to the president on whatever procedural matter you think is most appropriate for the board well, to you set that policy. Are you making a motion or not? You are moving. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I... Okay, is there a second? Um, it's funny. I just, one, just one note. I don't... So this is five. Is this the... This is the ordinance levying taxes, but um, that's the levy, and he's yeah. working. He's I, trying to budget amend the budget and which we don't have before us. We don't have it's it already here. been approved and right. filed. Okay. Um, all right. The other other detail um, I asked what the cost would be of making the change. It can be amended, but the cost would be at least four hundred and thirty dollars or more, plus staff time. Um, the fact of the matter is that such an amendment, as Kathleen has noted, would have no effect at all. Um, authorization to transfer money does not represent a commitment to do so if we don't need to. And we've adopted a levy that anticipates not having money to transfer. So it really wouldn't cause any, any change in operations but it would cost us some money so and staff time and it? staff time and i don't frankly i don't see any benefit in that um if we don't have the money we won't transfer anything mm -hmm. if we do have the money we'll have a choice to make mm -hmm. that's a decision that can't occur until the end of the current fiscal year and regardless of what the end result is next summer when we have the information we would still have the authority to amend the mo you know the the ordinance uh to reflect whatever the best judgment of the board is at that time so the proposed amendment wouldn't really do anything that would you know alter what we're going to have to consider anyway well my final hope is that it um is met with support conceptually that we have enough money in capital reserve. Uh, I've been in contact with the president for um, a month and a half now on trying to find the right procedural way to set that policy. But um, hopefully we'll um, not be on a path to end up with an extra $500,000 of an extra surplus, which is what it certainly looks like to me. And I hope we um, won't be adding to our already ample capital reserves now we're in the future, because we have got more than enough money to spend what we need to. But um, sensing the mood of the body, I'm happy to uh, you know, withdraw the motion, as it, it doesn't appear to be a second on the table. OK, the motion has been withdrawn. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for everybody's hard work um, on this. Um, That concludes the action items. Next is the outdoor renovation okay. project. <laughs> so um, as we last noted, the request for qualifications was drafted, and it's been posted in Pioneer North Editions. It was posted last October 11th, Thursday. And it has to be out there for at least 30 days. So uh, 
the receipt of any statement of qualifications is due November 16th, at which point uh, the new director will be in place and then we'll start to review those um, proposals. Um, I also wanted to mention that it, all of the documentation is available on the website and that is how we have posted it. So it's wilmetlibrary.info forward slash RFQ request for qualifications. Um, it's not on the agenda, but the drop box at um, the CTA Linden station is still very much alive. We did receive a memorandum of understanding from the CTA. We're missing one attachment that they need to send us that they mentioned in their memorandum. So I'm just waiting on that. That memorandum came this week. Okay. And um, a reminder that Thursday night we have um, Abdi Noor Iftin coming. Call me American. He will be at Wilmette Junior High School at 7 p.m. Lisa McDonald will be doing welcoming remarks and introducing the author to the community. So, any questions? There's no RSVP needed for that, to, for, the, for the talk on Thursday night? No, it's a big venue and we anticipate there'll be plenty of space. Okay. Great. Any yeah. questions? Um, I mean, I think we're all hoping that you know, once winter, which does seem, in fact, to be coming, uh, if we pulled our warmer clothes out, that this the outdoor renovation project will be able to proceed uh, in, you know, as soon as construction season starts, outdoor construction season starts again in the spring. The mm -hmm. Right. March, Hopefully April. they'll be doing bids in January and February for yeah. the components. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, annual report uh, located behind attachment seven. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone had a chance to look at it. I actually didn't say this ahead of time, Lisa, but I know you read it very, very carefully and had some comments. Um, I don't know. What do we think? Um, Can I just add two things? Yes. Mm -hmm. First of all, this is a draft. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so note that. Second of all, there are no photos, but photos were part, those are in the plans to mm -hmm. have, the, because right now it's just text and some graphics, and, and there will be photos. The plan is to make it into a four-page mailer. So, but Lisa's um, comments and thoughts were duly noted and will be discussed. And, and I welcome it. others. So if we have comments, just go ahead and email them to you. Is that sure. the best way? Okay. 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 Sure. So, just, okay. so it, it, what's the um, projected time frame for mailing it out? Um, probably near the end of November. Okay. Good. Beginning of December. Um, and does all me. our stuff go to Kenilworth as well as Wilmette? Yeah. Okay. And. Um, it could not go into off the shelf, the November, December off the shelf, because mm -hmm. that deadline was like a week yeah. ago. Unfortunately, it's better if it's separate anyway. It's kind of a Hopefully. different sort of document. More people will see it. So Sarah Beth will continue to work on it. Mm -hmm. um, right. So this will be still a document. I'm wondering. You know, One of the things that I think you need to put with our fiscal years because I, it's unclear yeah, yeah. what 2017 and oh, 2018 yes. is. Yeah. The other thing I put is in terms of finances, the percentage, you need to put what the total amount of that budget is. So if there's a reference as to what percent. Right. Some other things. And then the ROI is another thing that I like included based on Ron's example he used in the PowerPoint, but we need to get what the average household tax is for Wilmette Public Library. Right. No, we're working on that as well. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of Because it seemed, I saw, Barb thought yeah. it was going to be easy, except the numbers that we have are commercial as well as residential. Oh, and oh, so, so blend the number, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so we're going to try and find it. If not, I was thinking we could just kind of maybe ask people who live in Wilmette, come up with an average or, or just something. We, we might look at East, East versus West is a little different. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think it, that. yeah, because I know what Ron's and mine is, and it, they're they're different. We both live yeah. in mm -hmm. West Wilmette. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So The other thing I would recommend is that if we can find a way to include the graphic of four per, less than four percent of their library taxes yeah. go to the library. Yeah, I mean of the real estate of yeah. Wilmette real yeah. estate taxes yeah. go to the library. I think that's 
that's a, a really important way to help put things into context. Right. We're currently at 3.9 percent of the tax bill. But the so you know that's you know, and that's that's actually well below what we were what we're authorized by the residents to tax. We've stayed below that because we have not felt the need. To, to you know to ask for more money than that so the issue is is that you know we're we're committed to uh, to, to providing the services that are requested in our long-range plans um, within four percent of the tax bill and then in and so will we we will mail it out then with yes. the off the shelf no no because that's already well, just separate. separate. Right. separate. Okay. And it will be online as well? Yes. Great. Um, perfect. Um, so anyone who has suggestions yeah, or comments Comment. or, Jan, please proofread it. I've got <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This um, but they're mostly like just And uh, we'll make sure, I mean, obviously this will go out after Anthony is here, so we'll make sure that he has a chance to, mm -hmm. you know, Review weigh it. in on yeah. it as well. The next item is the fundraising letter, uh, and we did discuss that at the Finance mm -hmm. Committee. And I should say that actually just before this meeting, I was handed an envelope okay. from a financial institution, and I opened it up, and I said, oh, it's a check. It was a gift from a resident. Um, to the library um, that's not atypical. I mean, the library is very much loved and appreciated by the people of Wilmette. And one of the things that is really enjoyable, duties of the president, is mm -hmm. I sign the thank you letters. Um, and it's a huge stack. And people have individual comments and notes and a thank you for a service or a uh, shout out to a particular employee who did something or they want to uh, sometimes it's somebody from out of the area and they want to you know it's in memory of a family member who was a Wilmot resident and enjoyed the library and although we talked about not doing this, I do feel as though it has really been a valuable way for people to connect with the library um, in, a, in a different way than just paying their taxes, um, which is what we just did. Um, and I'm also personally proud of the fact that we um, collected money also for the disaster relief and since hurricanes seem to continue hitting, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it looks like there's going to be some towns that might need relief as mm -hmm. well again. So um, and that I goes through the American Library Association, um, the, the part that the people designate for disaster relief. Yes, yeah, so what we do is in the bottom, they right. get the check, there's a little card that we've included and they yeah. check they check for disaster relief if that's how they want all or a part or mm -hmm. some of it to go there. And, and it goes to I, libraries. Pardon? It goes to libraries. Yes. And it that goes have been to affected. libraries. It goes to Great. library disaster relief. And I think there are a lot of people, again, who really care for their library. And sometimes you would give money, but you don't know how to do that. Well, this gives them an opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of the things I meant to mention, there was a really cool thing in the New York Times today. Mm -hmm. And they contacted a bunch of fairly well-known writers, and they asked them um, something about their library or memories of their library, the library they went to as a child. And it was very moving, and it just shows that the, pe the connection that people have with the library and the way they do that. And I hope that we here in Wilmette are building connections among our patrons, our residents, for this library and for libraries in general. So anyway, and here's the letter. Jan, you'll have to proofread it, of course, as well. I thought it looked pretty good. The, <laughs> uh, Kathleen, the, the other said, detail oh. just to be aware of is that when we looked, we discussed this at last week's meeting, uh, we had, we looked at some of the data over the last several years. 
we had generally received between eighteen and twenty three thousand dollars a year in the contributions that follow sending out this letter we get contributions uh, from a few dollars to uh, over a thousand dollars only a few of those but the bottom line is we have um, residents of both Kenilworth and Wilmette who contribute uh, to the library on in response to this letter um, and that supports some innovative projects by staff there are other things that it's used for that are beneficial in addition to disaster relief support that um, we invite people who are making their contributions to uh, designate some of these funds for if they wish so this is this is a way of being staying in contact with the community the other thing i i would i think is important is that the frequency and the amount of bequests that we've received in the last years since we started this process has greatly increased because of the fact that people are aware of us um, as they're thinking about how they want their resources allocated. So it's been a benefit to some.